Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India In the next few lectures, I will be discussing on solidification and casting of steel. Under this, we will be discussing principles of solidification, then casting processes and then final finishing operations. So as such, first we start with the principles of solidification. Liquid steel is tapped from primary steel making vessel, then various operations have been done in secondary processing, inclusion modification, temperature control, whatever has been done, what are the principles of solidification? First, what is solidification? What is solidification? In fact, solidification is liquid to solid transformation, liquid to solid transformation on cooling. The reverse solid to liquid on heating. So, solidification is liquid to solid transformation which occurs when superheat and latent heat of solidification are removed. Now here pure metals, pure metals they solidify at constant temperature, they solidify at constant temperature as all of you know. What about alloys? Alloys they solidify over a range of temperature over a range of temperature. What does it mean? This I can illustrate for example, I take an isomorphous system, say I take an isomorphous phase diagram consists of A and B, here it is say 100 percent A here it is 100 percent B and I am adding here wet percent B, then typically an isomorphous system it looks for example this one, so this is an alloy of A and B. So if I want to consider the cooling of this particular concentration of alloy, then typically it cools if this is the liquid, this is the liquid plus solid and this is the solid. So, this particular alloy of this composition, this is somewhere here temperature, then it cools along this particular path. So, accordingly this particular line is known as liquidus and this particular line is known as solidus. Here is the temperature. So, when I say alloy solidify over a range of temperature, then a superheated liquid which is just above the melting point, say for example here, we will remove its superheat, it will touch this particular point, it will not solidify immediately on reaching the liquidus temperature, but it will take some time 
before it is completely solidified. So, this particular region you are seeing this means the solidification occurs over a range of temperature and the range of temperature consists of the, this is if this is the T L which is the liquidus temperature. So, this one is the solidus temperature. So, that is what is meant by solidification over a range of temperature. Now, on touching the liquidus line as we cool further what will happen? A solid will form. For example, if I consider a point at this particular region which is the liquid and solid that means, I have cooled this alloy from this temperature to this temperature then a solid will precipitate. A solid solution will precipitate and so, if this is the solid and this is the liquid then this has become a solid liquid interface. So, how the solidification will proceed? It will proceed through the advancement of solid liquid interface and as a result of this more and more solid will form. So, it is the movement of solid liquid interface. So, now we can have either a plain front solidification, either a plain front solidification. This plain front solidification can occur when temperature or the actual temperature is greater than liquidus temperature. Now, this situation can occur when no segregation is involved. Due to segregation of solute, the liquid adjacent to the solid liquid interface is supercooled. How does it happen? As the liquid cools, the solid is formed. Then there is an solubility of the impurity in the solid as well as in the liquid. So, depending upon the solubility of the impurity in the solid, the excess solute will be rejected into the liquid. So, therefore, the liquid which is adjacent to the solid liquid interface will get enriched with the solute element and this is called the phenomena of segregation. So, this type of say solidification it occurs which is called a dendritic solidification called dendritic solidification. As a result of rejection of excess solute which gets accumulated near the solid liquid interface. A condition arises where T actual becomes less than T liquidus. If I want to show over a diagram, for example, I take this one, this is here is the temperature. and this is here distance in the liquid distance in the liquid ahead of solidification front ahead of solidification front that means if it is zero so this particular thing is the location of solid liquid interface. So, as I move ahead of the solidification front in the liquid, then I get this condition that means this is 
the T actual and this is T liquidus. So, you are seeing up to this region, up to this region due to rejection of solute ahead solid liquid interface a, up to this region T actual is less than T liquidus that is T liquidus is greater than T actual. So, that means the liquid within this region which is a segregated one is said to be constitutionally super cooled constitutionally super cooled and this constitutionally super cooled phenomena occurs because of segregation of the solute elements and this segregation occurs because of the solubility difference between the solid and the liquid. So, the excess solute will be rejected by the solid and the impurity will concentrate near the solid liquid interface in the liquid. So, on account of that in that particular region up to which the segregated portion is there the liquid is said to be super cooled and this particular zone is also called mushy zone. So, the solidification occurs that means due to super cooling due to super cooling what has happened formation of cells at the interface takes place formation of cells at the interface and these cells grow rapidly these cells grow rapidly normal to the interface in some preferred crystallographic direction at high rates of solidification. So, on account of this the formation of primary dendrites will occur primary dendrites will form and the lateral growth of primary dendrite that is the lateral lateral growth of primary dendrite will give us so called secondary secondary and tertiary dendrites and tertiary dendrites and that is how the dendritic type of solidification it proceeds in this particular fashion this is contrary to the plane front. So, that means a mushy zone consists of a mixture of solid dendrites plus inter dendritic liquid because when the dendrites have been formed some amount of liquid which will be entrapped in the dendritic region that is called interdendritic liquid that is liquid which is entrapped within the two dendrites. So, imagine the dendritic structure is just like a tree like structure. Now, with this background let us see the solidification of liquid steel. Let us see solidification of liquid steel. Of liquid steel. Now, steel as all of you know is an alloy of iron, carbon, silicon, sulfur, manganese, oxygen, hydrogen, nitrogen and infusions. From steel making you have seen 
that the liquid steel which have, we have produced it contains all the all the impurities which I have mentioned just now. So that means one thing is clear it will solidify over a range of temperature it does not solidify at a constant temperature but it will solidify over a range of temperature when this happens what will happen to the impurity on solidification whatever solid will form the impurity will partition between solid and liquid. So, at solid liquid equilibrium at solid liquid equilibrium we define a equilibrium partition coefficient which is Ke that is equal to concentration of impurity in the solid upon concentration of impurity in the liquid. So, this equilibrium partition coefficient and its value will determine the extent of segregation. Now, let us see some of the values for example, if I take say element and value of K e in delta iron and in gamma iron. So, I take here carbon, sulfur, phosphorus, oxygen, nitrogen and hydrogen. Here it is 0 0.13. 0 0.02, 0 0.13, 0 0.02, 0 0.28 0 and 0 0.32. The Ke value in gamma iron is 0 0.36, 0 0.02, 0 0.06, 0 0.02, 0 0.54 0 and 0 0.45. So, particular you note the equilibrium partition ratio of sulphur and phosphorus. It is very, very low followed by oxygen also. But so, what will happen during solidification because of a very low solubility of sulphur and phosphorus, the excess sulphur and phosphorus will be rejected into solidifying liquid and as a result the last liquid which will solidify it will have a higher concentration of sulphur and phosphorus which will lead to formation of FES as I have said in steel making when I was mentioning that it is very important to control the impurity like sulphur and phosphorus. Now, you can correlate it why it is so important. Now, for example, if I take say for sulphur if we take for example, the Ke value is equal to 0 0.02. So, C s that is equal to 0 0.02 L. So, you can 0 0.02 C L. So, you can imagine the concentration or the solubility of sulphur in solid steel is very, very low. Now, so that means excess sulphur will be rejected adjacent to the solid. Now, say one can obtain the equilibrium solidification condition. If equilibrium is reached, then the extent of segregation will be minimized and in order to reach equilibrium condition, one has to, one has to give very long time because the diffusion processes in the solid is very, very extremely low as compared to in the liquid. So, considering the equilibrium solid say equilibrium solidification it requires mixing and homogenization of composition in both liquid and solid state. Now, say if we assume that there is a complete mixing in the solid state that is we make if we assume that complete mixing complete mixing 
in liquid stage and no diffusion in solid that is a very ideal condition no diffusion in solid because when solid will form the diffusion processes will take place in the solid to equalize the concentration and that requires a very long time. So, based on this assumption complete mixing no diffusion in the solid one can arrive at an equation the concentration of C L that is equal to C 0 1 minus F S rest to the power K E minus 1 and this equation is known as Shiles equation it is a very famous equation Shiles equation where F S is the fraction of solid F S is fraction of solid C L and C 0 I have already defined. So, with this equation one can analyze what is the concentration of an impurity in liquid we know F S and F S value can be determined from the phase diagram by applying lever rule and accordingly the value of K E can be obtained from, from what I have given over here or from any standard book. So, one can analyze what will be the uh, extent of segregation and so on. During solidification we have solid steel shell near the mold followed by liquid rich in solute element which is called mushy zone and liquid steel when we observe solidification normal to mold surface. Now, this is what in this particular diagram I am going to show temperature versus distance profile normal to mold surface during ingot solidification. Now, let me first of all write down this particular is the mold and this particular region this is the air gap and this is the air gap and the air gap forms due to thermal expansion of mold and solidification shrinkage. That means, air gap forms due to due to thermal expansion of mold thermal expansion of mold and solidification shrinkage solidification shrinkage. So, this is the reason for formation of air gap which is a very important phenomena in solidification because of the differential rates of thermal expansion and solidification shrinkage the air gap forms. Then next to air gap we have this is the solid shell this is the solid shell that is from here to here is a solid shell. Then from here to here we have the so called mushy zone we have so called mushy zone and uh, here we have liquid steel we have liquid steel. Now, knowing that the thermal conductivity thermal conductivity of mushy zone is smaller than thermal conductivity of steel thermal conductivity of steel whereas thermal conductivity of air gap as all of us we know thermal conductivity of air gap 
is much 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 smaller than thermal conductivity of shell solid shell then thermal conductivity of shell now as a result if we want to show the thermal gradient or the temperature versus distance profile in mushy zone solid shell and mold and air gap it can be shown something this particular way so first of all we have the liquid steel it comes over here this is the profile now because the thermal conductivity of mushy zone is smaller than thermal conductivity of steel so temperature gradient will be steeper in this mushy zone now solid shell has a higher thermal conductivity so the gradient will not be that steep but it will be somewhat flatter this is the thermal gradient in steel shell now the most important is the thermal gradient or the steep temperature drop in the air gap because of the very small thermal conductivity of air gap so the temperature drop suddenly in the air gap and then again the temperature decreases so that is how this particular this is the temperature versus this distance profile shown normal to mold surface during ingot solidification and it is strongly depends upon the thermal conductivity as shown in the figure now suppose if we pour a killed steel into the mold and you would like to see how the macro structure is developed in the ingot so for that let us see the macro structure of the cross section of an ingot so this is the blue one blue color that is this one is a chilled layer is a chilled layer mold is water cooled as you pour the liquid the liquid which is in contact with the surface of the mold it gets immediately chilled so as such we have the chilled layer then i have said that because of the segregation a mushy zone will form and in the mushy zone which consists of dendrites and interdendritic liquid so this so this will be so called columnar zones now which also consists of dendrites in the central portion the central portion we have a central zone we have a central zone which consists of which consists of dendrites but they are randomly oriented and we call dendrites which are randomly oriented randomly oriented and we call equi x zones equi x zone so now with this background on principle of solidification let us see now the ingot casting let us see now ingot casting the first in the casting process now ingot casting is done in cast iron mold it's done in cast iron molds the molds can have square round or polygonal cross section or poly polygonal cross section typical ingot weight typical ingot weight it varies means for rolling 5 to 20 tons 
whereas for forging huge size that is from few hundred few hundred tons to as high as 300 tons mold design mold design there are two design one narrow end up narrow end up which automatically means wide and down that means if i can show it over here this is the bottom plate this is the narrow end up or wide end down second design is narrow end down narrow end down automatically means wide and up if i can show over here this is the narrow end down this is the narrow end up now the question comes why cast iron molds why cast iron mold and a conical shape because thermal coefficient of cast iron is different from that of steel steel contracts more than cast iron therefore detachment becomes easier now that is what the importance in the design conical shape it facilitates ingot while while pulling ingot from the mold through a crane now here narrow end up molds they are most convenient for stripping the ingot after solidification so that is what the answer for why cast iron molds and why there is a conical shape because of the easier stripping of the ingot from the mold after solidification another important thing that inner walls of the mold inner walls of the mold are coated they are coated by tar oblique fine carbon again the question is why if you don't coat it what will happen the solidified shell which is in contact with the mold it may get stick so during stripping it becomes very difficult the coated material it decomposes which prevents sticking of solidified ingot on the mold surface so that is what why inner walls of the mold are coated by some coating material next thing timing timing how the liquid steel is steamed in the ingot one can have top pouring bring a ladle put it on top of the ingot slide gate is opened the liquid steel is steamed into the ingot and that is the top pouring another is say bottom pouring another is the bottom pouring now in the bottom pouring the liquid steel is is poured into a channel and this channel now subdivides into two ingots or two ingot mold and the liquid steel which is coming from the ladle is bifurcated into the two streams and the liquid steel begins to fill in the mold from the bottom to the top that is what the bottom pouring consists of 
Now another important thing is the classification of steel in guts. You know, we can produce different types of steel which are which are classified based on the oxygen content of the steel or based on the oxygen killing. So as such, we have three different types of ingot that are being produced a major three types of one is the killed steel second is the semi killed steel and third is the rimming steel for orientation i'll put killed steel as a semi killed steel is b and c is the rimming steel between semi killed and rimming steel that is b between b and c some different type of ingot can also be produced which will depend upon the rimming action that I will tell you what does it mean. So, first of all let us concentrate on the killed steel the structure or the macro structure I have shown this is the ingot which is the top of the mold this is the bottom of the mold and because of the contraction of the steel in case of killed steel a pipe formation occurs. Now this pipe formation is because of the contraction of the steel. The steel which will be last to solidify, the amount of steel is not sufficient to meet the contraction which has occurred during solidification. Hence the topmost part of the ingot has a pipe or a shrinkage cavity which has to be scarfed during processing. So this is about the macro structure of killed steel. Now in semi killed steel, the steel is not killed completely. Part of the oxygen is left over. So on solidification, whenever the solubility between the carbon and oxygen arrives, the carbon oxide bubble forms and hence the macro structure of the semi killed steel is characterized by these are the so called blow holes. And these blow hole forms when um, say 60 70 percent of the steel is solidified because oxygen content is, is still not sufficient so that it can form right from the beginning. The steel is also not fully killed. C is the rimming steel. Now, in the rimming steel, no deoxidation is done because of the reaction between carbon and oxygen that occur during solidification large amount of carbon monoxide bubbles are generated during solidification. These bubbles may eject the droplets and the droplets fall back into the liquid steel they bring oxygen. So on account of that there is large amount of CO that can be entrapped. So these are the blow holes. Now because of the formation of CO and this is called rimming action. Now I can use the term rimming because of the rimming action the gradients will be minimized and the steel which is solidifying in contact with the mold it is a very clean steel which is free from segregation and this sort of a layer which is just close to the wall of the mold this is the clean metal. the clean metal. Now let me write down the characteristics of all these ingots. Now first is the killed steel. Now here oxygen is killed how it is killed by aluminum. So killed steel as you recall from deoxidation is done by aluminum and killed steel is used or killed steel ingots are used when first homogeneous structure is required in finished steel. Homogeneous structure is required in finished steel that is the number 1. Number 2 
typically alloy steels alloy steels forging grade steels forging steels and steels for carburized type they are produced as a killed steel ingots certain extra certain extra deep drawing deep drawing steels certain extra deep drawing steels a very low carbon for example less than 0.12% maximum these steels are also killed but the killed steel solidification has two problems one the pipe formation as you have seen this is the pipe formation for killed steel and second problem for killed steel is the alumina content of the steel which is being obtained by use of aluminum so these are the important issues for killed steel ingot now about the semi killed we have say percentage carbon for semi killed steel the percentage carbon is in between 0.15 to 0.3% now here you must be wondering why there is no solidification shrinkage or pipe formation is occurring though steel is semi killed it is not killed with aluminum maybe by silicon and manganese because of the evolution of carbon monoxide during the solidification it counterbalances the solidification shrinkage so in killed steel there is no co evolution because there is no oxygen over there in semi killed steel partly there is oxygen it is not killed completely but it is semi killed in between semi killed and rimming one or in the rimming steel there is another grade is produced which is called capped steel which is called capped steel in the capped steel it is the variation of rimming steel practice the rimming action is allowed to begin in the beginning and is then terminated after a minute or two by closing the top of the mold by a cast iron cap in fact this capped steel is also a modified form of rimming steel practice which is done as i have said earlier a little amount of co is allowed to occur but soon after the top of the mold is closed by a cap and more uh, is cold is rather closed by the cap and this steel this capped steel ingot they are produced for carbon to be greater than 0.15% now this practice of killed capped steel uh, ingot production is used for say sheet strip wire and bars about say rimming steel in the rimming steel no deoxidation is done no deoxidation is done the percentage carbon is in between 0.12 to 0.15 percent because of the large evolution of carbon monoxide the steel or the solidified layer in contact with the mold is very clean and it will also be low in the solute because of continuous stirring that is provided by the co bubbles and this rimmed quality ingot they are suited for steel sheets so that is what the different type of ingots 
that is being produced and they are useful and so on. So, now with this let us see ingot defects and their remedies. Ingot defects and remedies and remedies. Now, the first ingot defect is pipe. why it forms? It forms because of shrinkage, because liquid steel shrinks on solidification. Pipe is a shrinkage cavity which is formed at the top of the killed steel ingot. Mind you, it forms only in the killed steel. What is its effect? What is effect? During reheating oxidation and formation of oxide, oxidation and formation of oxide scale, what will it do? It will prevent welding during hot rolling because when you hot roll it oxide scale is very brittle. So, the welding will not occur. Hence, pipe portion of the killed steel ingot has to be rejected. How to eliminate? Now, pipe formation is eliminated by putting hot top at the by putting hot top at mold top. So, what is hot top? The hot top keeps the ingot top hot and molten for a longer period. As a result, liquid steel from top compensates the shrinkage which has occurred during solidification. So, that is what in fact hot top is. That means, top of the ingot is kept hot so that the liquid steel remains molten for a longer period. Sometimes, use of insulating and exothermic materials on the top of ingot further ensures availability of hot metal at the ingot top. Pipe formation in fact, pipe formation which occurs due to shrinkage of liquid steel on solidification, it can be minimized also by casting in wide and up molds. That means, there are two ways in which it can be done. One way by hot top, another way is to casting in wide and up molds by casting in wide end up molds what happens? The pipe though it will form or the shrinkage cavity will form, but it will form at the top it is shallow and wider in nature. So, I show you by way of a sketch in the figure A a narrow end up mold is used for casting. So, you see this is the ingot top and the because of the solidification shrinkage, the pipe formation extended deep into the ingot and this is in fact the primary pipe, primary pipe and to some extent secondary pipe has also been formed. Now, if I take wide end up mold, in the wide end up mold you can see 
this is now the pipe formation and pipe formation is now occurring at the top of the ingot and you see also it is shallow in nature and little wider in nature. So, you can use more amount of ingot as compared to when casting is done in narrow end up. Now, if I provide a hot top, so this is the hot top may have exothermic mixture or whatever way this is the hot top. Now, the level of steel is ingot is same here as well as here. So, now you see if I provide hot top with the wide end up mold and if I cast it what will happen? The pipe formation it goes in the hot top and the entire ingot remains free from solidification shrinkage that is how the solidification shrinkage is eliminated. Next defects we will discuss in the next lecture.